Okay, let's continue with some of the file system stuff here for the OS dev. Got my coffee, so I think I'm good to go. All right, so the only things I did, very small changes between last uh, video and this, the end of the last part and this one. So I'm gonna look at those. Just because I looked over it right after I stopped recording, I was like, oh, these look wrong. So <laughs> we're initializing file system variables, the root inode is at inode one, but I don't need to go beyond the sector that it's contained within, right, on the on the actual disk. So the first inode block holds, you know, the sectors, the first eight sectors of the inodes, of which the root inode will be in the first sector. I don't need to add one to that, which I was doing before. I can just take the sector that starts at the first inode block, convert that to a sector number by multiplying by eight, and that's all right. So I didn't need the plus one there. I do need the plus one here, because that's pointing to inode zero and that inside of that data block on the disk, that sector there, it's pointing to inode zero at the start, which is gonna be used for like invalid inodes later, I guess. We have a return in inode number zero, that's not a real one. That'll be used for error handling or other things, but the root inode is right after that, so I have to add one. That one's correct, but not the other one. So, and then we have the file system implementation here. Only need one slash. When I'm getting the inodes from paths, I was uh, not doing these things correctly. I did get one warning when compiling because this was a constant. So I'm just casting that to a character pointer here just to remove that constant. I'm not affecting the data here, but I am setting another pointer to that. So I need to cast that to get rid of that constant qualifier. Because C is weakly typed and that's always fun. <laughs> Introduce unintended bugs later, of course. So the way I was doing this before, if we're testing for a null or with a slash, and I just skip past the dot, that skips, you know, dot files and things that begin with a period, begin with a dot. So I want to have those be valid later to be able to grab the files and get their inodes and information and everything. So I'm just including this condition like I had it to begin with, um, with a clearer head today. So if a file name starts with a dot and then the next, the very next character, yeah, the very next character is a null or a slash, in case we're doing the current directory, then I'm just counting that. Uh, but we're, we'll skip past the first dot, because whether it's a null or a slash, it'll skip the slash here anyway. So I don't need to do that. Um, yeah. That's only for the relative current directory. If it's a dot file, it'll begin with a dot, but then the next character will not be a null and will not be a slash. So only in these two cases I can continue. And this will skip the slash anyway. Otherwise, if it's a null, it'll end the loop. So that's okay. Um, I could also move some of the parent directory checks within here. Like if the next character is a dot, then do this stuff instead of having it be a full separate thing, but oh well. Uh, but this I changed a little bit too in case somebody prefixes files with two dots because yeah, why would you do that, you monster? Why would you have a file named dot dot file? I don't know, but maybe somebody does and this should fix that, that issue there. Dot files for your dot files, I guess. So just comparing, you know, again, if the first two are dots and then the third one is a null or a slash. So explicitly, is this the parent directory we're referring to? That's all. So those are the only changes I did. So I was going to, I guess, work on this, get the current inode here to return it, and then maybe make a helper function abstract it out into something there to make it easier to read and work with right now. I'm not. So, okay. I'm not sure we have to actually replace the uh, the character that we're pointing to here with a null because if it is a null it will be if not it's a directory and when we continue the loop you know we're going to skip the directory separator anyway and get the next inode so <clears throat> that's fine we can at least grab the inode from the current data blocks here i don't think we'll have to do this because we'll end up on the null or the slash regardless from this little while loop here so if it's a directory then we'll do that we're going to do this anyway and I'll probably do this stuff here. So the current inode that we're looking at, we need to find this new files inode, and that'll be in the data blocks of the current one, which is going to be a directory that we're inside of. So we'll probably do this, this stuff here. That's within the if statement. So yeah, the scoping would be different. We'll probably do this. Probably do the same thing here, copy paste. That's kind of why I wanted to abstract it out so I'm not duplicating everything, you know. But that's all right for this. So we'll read in uh, the first block of the directory. We'll look for the name 
I think this is separate. Let me just make this its own thing within this overall function. This won't be a constant anymore because I'm going to mess with it. We'll just have this be here. And we'll set it. It's a pointer, so we'll set there. And then we don't need that here. Okay. Of course, until I move it into its own helper function again. But right now, we'll just do this. We'll say, hey, we're only looking for something in the first data block. We need to find where the name is. So this isn't going to be... Well, we can start at plus one. We can really just start at the data block or plus two. Since zero and one are going to be dot and dot dot. Plus two may be a null, though. So... We could start at one, or we could just say we're going to start here and look for it. So I need to look for the name that we're looking for in this case. So let's just put, yeah, we're just searching for directory entry name equal to the name. Um, if it is a slash then, and we're looking for a name, it does need to be null terminated. So actually... We do need to null terminate it. That's why I had that. So we could save position here. We could replace this with a slash if it's not a null. Uh, let's do this. Save position. I don't like doing this, but that's all right. We'll save the position here. Or we could have just a character here. Slash. <laughs> Uh, I need to save the condition if we're on a slash or not, so. I'll say this. We'll do was. I'll say was slash. Equals false. And we'll do that. Bad way of doing this. I do want to change this. That's what I'm doing right now. <laughs> When we return, we'll have the, the correct stuff here. This is a terrible way of doing this. But I'll just set the position value back to a slash if it originally was. We could have a temp value, save it to temp and return it. That would probably be better instead of doing this, this stuff here. So let's actually do that. Character temp equals position. We'll set position to null. It may have already been null, but that's fine. So name is position, but temp will also equal the data at position. Um, which is going to be, yeah, after here. So save whatever character it was. Set it to null. We'll say properly null terminate name string as needed. And then at the end, we'll set it back. Restore slash other character. Probably is only going to be a slash, but that's fine. We'll just do that. Okay. So the difference here where we're looking for the name, we're only, we don't know where it is at within the data blocks. Hopefully it's only within the first block, but... That's the use for the helper function later. <laughs> right now we don't know where it's at within the data block, but assuming it's only within one, we can just search through it, through this temp block here. So while directory entry name, while it doesn't equal the other one, so while not string compare, string in compare, we'll see, I might get errors with this, but we're searching for name. I'm gonna do string in compare and string length name, because we know it's null terminated at this point. So we'll say instead, we'll say while that does not equal zero, I could have a for loop actually setting these things up, but I need the value after here, so yeah, this is fine. While it's not equal zero, directory entry plus plus. So a directory entry has an ID and a name, and while the name part is not the name of the file that we're looking for, which is set here, if we're looking for, if we're inside of folder A and we want to go into folder B to get to file C, you know, we need to search through 
folder A to find the name folder B. And that'll be within the data blocks, within folder A. So that's what I'm doing. I'm searching for the directory entry name portion where the name is equal to the thing that we're looking for. And once we find that, directory entry uh, arrow ID will be the inode ID that we can use for that. So I don't need to load the parent inode here, but I do need to load the right one. So I'll just say load current inode. Uh, if we didn't find the file, then it's an error. And I'm returning an inode, so we'll say if directory entry ID is zero, so we did not find anything, it doesn't have an ID after searching through this point, which we should also make sure we don't go outside of the block to Load additional blocks as needed. So if the ID is zero, then we did, did not find the next inode directory file, what have you. We didn't find what we're looking for. You too still haven't found what we're looking for. So that would be an error condition. So I'm gonna return, uh, I might wanna return just a pointer from this eventually. Right now it's still an inode, so I'm just gonna return an inode filled with zeros so we can check that as a return value from this later. So we'll return an inode t's worth of nulls <laughs> for that space. Turn zero is an error, so otherwise we'll load the inode here and we'll have the ID divided by eight because there's eight within a sector. So we'll get that offset from the first sector which should be this. Yeah, then we'll load it. And we'll get the inode from that sector by doing, yep, modulo eight. Probably should surround this with parentheses as well. Yeah, temp sector plus that, and that'll be inode t's worth of jumps every time because of pointer arithmetic, and then we'll load that, and that should be okay. And then if this was a directory, that'll be a slash. And when we go back up here, if it's a slash, we'll continue, and then if we're done, we'll end, okay. So that should handle those all right. Some duplication and stuff, but again, that's okay right now. We won't know if any of these work because we don't have everything set up, which is kind of, <laughs> that's kind of fun. You know, how do you know your file system works until the whole thing is actually set up to work? You don't really. But I think that'll be okay. I'm hoping at least, so. But we could abstract this out into a helper function. I do want to do that. Uh, but assuming that works, we'll have found an inode from a path. And the whole reason I was doing that was uh, to be in syscall open. Is it syscall open, not SYS? Yeah. I was doing that within here because I wanted to resolve a relative path. Don't need to do that. Traverse the path and grab the inode there. So I can do that now. Do I have something? I don't. Um, Let's make an inode, like a temporary one or something. This will be for the file that we're opening. So I'll just call it file inode. And that will be whatever I call this, inode from path. If I have impl within here, I just have fs.h. Uh, this file includes that. So let's just do, include the implementation file within the syscalls. That won't cause any errors later, right? Maybe it will. <laughs> So what path are we given? We're given the path that was passed into this function, which is character file path. Okay, hopefully that works. So let's just say grab inode for given file path. If it exists, if it doesn't exist, we need to check if the flags have o create. Let me move this over for now. We'll just say this if file inode, and that would have an ID, right? So I do need to open this again. because I don't remember, where's inode t? So that has an ID number. That'll be zero if we didn't find the file. So if this is zero, then we'll error. Well, if it's zero and flags, which is called flags, 
let's say, and not flags and o create. So if they said we're not going to make the file, but the file doesn't exist, then we're not supposed to make the file. So that's an error in this in this part. So we'll return an error for that. I could set fd is zero. I know I'll be doing this. I guess I'll do that up here. So move zero to eax rfd. Let's just do fd is negative one by default. So yeah, we can do that. Yeah, then we'll return. Okay. Not exist. Um, yeah, if file does not exist and user did not say to create, error in return. Okay. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, not sure how to differentiate. I did look and there is an O directory flag for open. Or open to. There is an O directory flag. There's O direct as well. So O directory, if the path name is not a directory, cause the open to fail. So this might only be for, I don't know, certain Linux distros or Unix or something. I guess open dir is a is a different thing which is used for directories. I did not know that. Is that a syscall? No. It's a different thing here. I guess that specifically says it's going to be a directory. So this is a pointer, not necessarily a system call. That is directory entries. Well, I'll be doing things a little bit differently. I'm not really making Unix, so so be it. This is called open. I guess I'll do like an open directory flag though to say, hey, this is technically a directory instead of having a full separate syscall. I think that would be okay. If I need to do something differently later, of course, we can do it later. So let's say syscall numbers here where I have these. Let's have another one. And really these should probably be two apart, shouldn't they? To or and and with them. Yeah, let's do that. Let's do... Um, Let's do one, two, you know, the powers of two here for our flags, eight. Sixteen, then we'll need thirty-two. Okay, so let's do O directory or O dir, we'll say. And 64. File is a directory. Or, well, do we need to do this? If I find the inode for the file and it's a directory, wait, I don't think I need to do this. I will keep the flags like this, though, because that's, that's better. But um, I keep forgetting what I've done and what I haven't done. <laughs> Sorry. I don't need to do this because in the inode we have the file type. Yeah. And the file types are in, uh, should be up here. Yeah, these two, file and directory. Let's make that an enum. That would be better too. Actually, I believe we'll have file type T. Or, well, file types. I don't know how I should call enums E, maybe. I don't know. We'll have file type file, that should be zero, but we'll do that anyway. File type directory is one. So file type. And whatever, I'll do T. That's fine. It's a type def. So this would be an int and not a uint8, however. But I do kind of want those to be enums. Um, but that would be one byte over this, so never mind. Never mind. <laughs> I wish I could constrain the values somehow, though, to only like certain numbers and certain bounds. I mean, I know I could do a struct. Maybe, maybe even an anonymous struct, but if I did file type t, and I did, you know, un8t8, 8, 8, 
or something with eight. And this was type. So I know that would take the full eight, eight bits of the UN8 type, and that would constrain it to only eight bits. I don't know. Is that a decent way to do it? That's a terrible way to do it, right? This would make sense if it was less, like if we only allowed four bits. That would make sense, but this is kind of complicating it too much. So no, U UN8 is, is fine. We'll just keep, uh, we'll keep these. <laughs> That's fine. We'll just check if it's a file or a directory later. Uh, sizes, bounds, limits. Yeah, we'll just do that. That's that's fine. So we don't need to do that. So I don't know if I need to differentiate between these two, but if we do, if file inode type equals file type dir or directory. I don't know if we're going to do anything for that, but right now it's that because we're going to return an inode anyway. I don't think I have to do anything with that though. So this probably doesn't matter in this opens this call anyway. Uh, if we're reading the directory, it will, but we can always check the type within reading the directory from the inode. So that's fine. We can check the type from the inode there. So it doesn't exist and it does have ocreate. If it does not have ocreate. Uh, put this here. The user did not say to create. Let's put this check in here. If not, flags and ocreate. And we'll do that. Okay, else. File doesn't exist and flags does have ocreate. So we need to create the file and do all that stuff. That'll be in a separate function, probably. So I called our current one that we're saving. I'm prefixing with fs. Okay, so let's say we have a different function in there later. That's called fs create file. And we'll give it the file name or the inode or something. Well, we'd, we're going to create it in a certain area and it'll be in, within the current directory or whatever directory that we found the file in. So we may need to grab the parent inode actually. We're getting inode from path. I might need another file then to get that. Uh, this is annoying. <laughs> Let's do create function to get parent directory of given file name or path. Yeah, get parent directory of given file path. So this would be the last directory yeah, found containing the final name. Yeah, file name directory, okay. So if we have something like folder A, folder B, file C, I want another function to return folder B. Uh, say the parent directories inode. So I want something to return folder B in this case, and I'll need that because I'm gonna create file C if it doesn't exist. And I sent O create, but I need to create that within its containing directory. And at this point, I don't have that directory. So I need to get it, you know, I need to get it. So <laughs> I have to get that directory somehow. But this is gonna be a fake function anyway. We'll say this is fake function. We'll say, instead of inode from path, we'll say parents directory inode from path or something like that, or maybe, last directory inode from path, given path. We'll say we'll do that and we'll create the file for the file path. 
which is what that's called, right? Yeah, file path. Given that inode. So that'll be another function we make later, of course. Because we'll have to put it within there. Okay, but that's, we might need to do other things in there that'll be within create file, that logic. But assuming that's there, that's fine. And then we'll probably return here. Um, this should return FD. We'll have that return the actual thing, FD. Well, actually, we'll have to add that, won't we? We'll have to add the inode. Let's say inode. We'll return an inode there. And we have file inode here. So let's do that. File inode. We won't return yet. So at this point, we expect to have the file inode. So then we can search for it in the open inode table. It's kind of awkward laying out this logic when it doesn't exist yet. <laughs> Well, that's all right. And to open inode table if not there, so we have to search for that. And I have the pointer, the open file table, or the open inode table. Yeah, the open inode table. So I need one for that probably, like a temporary value to search through that table. So I can have a pointer or a full inode. Pointer would be less memory, right? So I should use pointers for some of these things. So let's say pointer temp equals open inode table, which is what I call that, yeah. Temp inode, because I might have another thing for the open file table, it's called temp, so unfortunately I have to namespace that. So let's say, I could do within a for loop though, but I do need the value after to set the data, so yeah, that's fine. Let's say for this, we'll have temp inode plus plus, I have some data within there. So we need it not to be null, I guess, because the open inode table, did I set that to null within the kernel? I didn't, did I? I probably didn't need to, because I'm keeping track of the max open inodes, which should be the position within the array of the open inode table, that array that we're ending on. So I should be able to use that actually. How big is that? You went 32. I don't like putting a ton of data within these uh, system calls, but oh well. Let's say current inode index, or well, maybe inode table index. Say zero. Say current inode table index plus plus. Well, we'll do two R's for current. So I'm searching through the table here. So what I need to do is see if the current table index, or while it's less than, if it equals, then it's on the end. So we'll say less than or equal to max open inodes. Oh, wait, no, current open inodes, yeah. All right, because that's how many files are currently open. So we need to see if it's there. If it's not there, then we can add it to the first one that's open, I think. Yeah, if it's not there, we could we could see if it's less than the maximum that's open and, the, and then add it. I don't know if we should put it within the first open slot or not. Because there will probably be fragments within this table later as we're adding and removing things. I might have to shift things around then. Maybe this will be like a linked list situation. I'm not sure. Not great, but I can try this for now. But we shouldn't find it if the file wasn't made yet. But you never know. How do we know if it's in there? I guess if the IDs match. So if temp node ID equals, we could stop when it equals it as well. Might change this to be a while loop. Let's just say, <laughs> I'm overcomplicating this. I know I'm doing that, but oh well. We'll say not equal, whatever we're looking for, file inode.id. Then we'll, uh, we'll do this. OK, 
Okay. It might be a little bit easier to read. So if we find it, we'll be on the position where it's at. If we don't find it, we'll keep searching, and we'll keep searching until we've reached the limit of what's currently open. Okay. We want to add if it's not there yet. So this will search it first. If it already exists in the table, add the reference count. Otherwise, we'll add it. So we'll say if temp node ID equals file inode, or if file inode ID equals temp node ID, might be easier to read there. Then the file already exists in the table, so we'll increment the reference count for the inode. We have another open reference to it, I think. And that'll come into play later, like if we delete the file, we don't want to fully delete it off the system if multiple things have it open. We want to just decrease the reference count. If everything that had the inode, the file open, says to delete it, then we won't have a reference to it anymore, we won't need it anymore, we can delete it, I think. I think that's why I'm, I added the reference count, but... I guess I'll do that. I'm just not sure where I need to keep track of that within like the file table versus the inode table if everything in the file table is going to be a reference to that or not. Because a process can have the same file open multiple times, and that would increase account within the file table, but not the inode table. If those equal, I mean, we need to increase it in the backing store, so that's in the file table, so. Temp inode, temp inode is a pointer as well, so that needs to be that. Temp inode reference count will increase. I have else it doesn't exist, so I'll have to add it. So this will be the this will be for the file table. Let's say search for file inode and open inode table. If it exists in the inode table. Increment the, re increment the reference count of the inode, else file is not in inode table, add it. Okay, and we'll have to do something similar for the open file table. And then the file descriptor will be the index of the file table position entry. Yeah. So how do we add to the open inode table? We can simply add to temp inode wherever it's at. Because I'm assuming they're all contiguous and we won't have to deal with, with this anymore. <laughs> We could say if it's not zero, then we'd keep increasing, right? If we have a position, I'm gonna have multiple checks here. <laughs> uh, if we haven't gone to all of the inodes yet, and And we haven't found our file, which if it's new, we won't find it. But if we haven't gone through all the inodes yet and it's zero, I'm going to say that's a hole in the open inode table. So we might need to fill that in later. But if we find a hole, it doesn't count as an open file because it won't have an ID of zero. So we're not going to count those as far as the index increasing. So if it's not equal to zero, then we'll increment the inode index. We'll increment this regardless. Yeah. I don't need that. I don't need three separate ones in the if, but I will have this. Okay, yeah, we'll skip over holes in the table like this. Skip over empty holes in inode table, because those aren't going to be valid, and this one will be for the currently open number. Yeah, okay. We'll do that. So if we reach the limit of the current open inodes, then we have gone one beyond that with the inode table index. Although would that go to the end? Now I'm thinking that might go to the end of the table every time, which would not be good. <laughs> so actually we, we might not want to do that. But if we open a file, if we have nothing open, it'll be zero. If we open a file, the max open would be one. The current open would be one as well. This would be zero. If it's not equal to zero, we'd increment. Otherwise, we'd keep going. The current would stay at zero. 
So that would go to the end because neither of these would be true. Actually, these both, both conditions would be true. So we go to the end of the table and that would probably bring a, a page fault because it'd go way too much. So this is not good code. <laughs> we need, I guess we would need to incorporate max open inodes then. That's why I have that. So don't do that, please. So the size is the max open inodes. Yeah, okay, so that's the end of the list. So let's use that instead. We do want to do this, that's fine. But I will add another condition here. Yeah, the table index actually can increase every time. Never mind. We'll increase that every time. But I will check if we're at the end of the list as well. So, current index, the current element that we're on in this table. Probably less than, not equal, for this one. And we haven't found it yet. Yeah, okay. We reached the end of the list. We don't want that, and that's going to be zero based. Current open inodes, I think I'll have be one based. Well, that'll be zero based as well. If they're zero open, then we'll keep searching until we reach the end of the list. If there's one file open at this point, we'd reach until we find the file. This would increment every time, though, so this would not be good. Oh, uh, I like programming when I have no idea what I'm doing. It makes me look great and smart and intelligent. I have no idea what I'm doing. <laughs> oh, we're just keeping a straight index. That's fine. That's fine. We don't even need this, actually. If we're just checking our inode, we could check, like, temp inode minus the start of the list and then divide by the size, and that would count the elements, but I'm not going to do that. Let's just not do that. Let's just do this. Yeah, I will add those back. If we're not at the end of the list, we haven't found it, we'll keep going. I also, I was thinking like I wanted to keep track of the first open hole in the list, like the first thing where the, the ID is zero, so we have a spot to add it later instead of reading the list twice, potentially, because that's, well, that's still O of N, not N squared, but. I guess we're not doing this too much, it doesn't matter. Yeah, whatever. If we didn't find it, we reached the end of the list. I'm going to have to start over here. I need to add it. So what I need to do is find first open spot in inode table. And we'll have to do this again, pretty much. Which is not great, but that's what I'm doing. Need, to, need those braces. Okay, so while we're less and temp node ID not equal zero, then we'll keep searching. So then I need another check if we reach the end of the list. <laughs> So if this equals the max open inodes, then we reach the end of the list. We need to add another one. All right, reached current end of open inode table. Add an entry. Let's do realloc or expand table size and add an entry for file. I'll have to do that, probably. We'll probably have to do similar things for the open file table as well. So let's say max open inodes times equal to. Um, current open inodes, is that what I called it? Current open inodes, yep. Current open inodes plus plus. I know we'll do that. So I need to do this, but I need to do like the temp inode needs to be at the point in the table that's free, which would be max open plus one. 
but I need to do that before I multiply by two, or after I multiply by two and reallocate the size of the table. Otherwise I'd be pointing to memory that doesn't exist yet, which would not be good. Be like a new malloc value, probably. Although I should do realloc. I need to make a realloc. I don't have a realloc yet. That would be better than wasting more memory and freeing, but that's okay. That's okay, probably. Let's malloc size of inode t times max open inodes times 2. We'll have that, and then I'll copy into that. Do I have a mem copy? I don't know what I have anymore. Yes, and a mem copy with 32 bit. If it's divisible by 4. Which it might or might not be. I'll just do mem copy, that's fine. <laughs> so that is dest source length. So we'll have dest. Um, should be our malloc pointer. Our source is going to be the current open inode table. Length is going to be size of inode t times the current max open inodes. So we'll copy that into malloc, and I'm going to free the current open inode table, because stuff's duplicated now. <laughs> then I'm going to set that equal to the malloc pointer, so it equals the new, the new table that we copied the data into. So this is somewhat part of what realloc would do, but realloc would not get like a whole new thing and set it. Realloc would use the current pointer to memory and expand it by searching for new data that we can add to it. New free data, free memory. So that's what we'll do, set it there. And then we'll increase by two after we set the data. So our temp inode, I can set to, well, open inode table is an inode T, right? Yeah, that is an inode T. So I can do that plus max open inodes since it's zero base, that will be the that will be one after the max and it will be added according to it should be pointer arithmetic from this being an inode T. So I don't like relying on implicit assumptions, but that's what this will do. Since this is a zero based list, it'll go to the new max of plus one of current open inodes. It'll go one beyond the original. So temp inode can point to that. And then the data at that point within the table can equal our file inode data. If we created the file at this point, which I'm assuming we did up here, then the inode has that data. If we didn't create the file, it would still have it would still have the data from getting the inode. So I'm just setting that data within the inode table. Okay, <laughs> at the new max spot, which is the original max plus one, and that will be our current um, open inodes. This is B plus one, which is what this was doing. Well, this could still be a plus plus then, right? This equals the max open. Max open. Yeah, it would, would be by two at this point. I guess the current table index would be this. I don't know. Because that's what we're pointing at. But we'll fill the data here. Go to original max plus one, and then fill that table element. 
The current index is going to point to that, which I think is this plus one. The max has now been increased by double its size. Current open inodes does increase by one. Yeah, okay. Yeah, so the original current is plus one because we're opening a new file. But the position in the table is at the original max plus one because that's where we're adding the data. Yeah, okay. That kind of sort of makes sense, but not really. I'm confusing myself. <laughs> How many errors we got so far? Not too many. Get another thing there at 63 in impl. That's 54, 11 down, nope. Uh, need another one there. This call is 161, yeah, temp inode is different. 161, yeah. This goes here. This is not going to load. Well, actually, this will this will boot because I'm not doing anything. But sometimes you got to make sure. Reach the current end. Else, we reached open. Yeah, an open position in inode table. Add data to this position. I guess this would increase by one either way. So we can just add that there. If we haven't reached the max, then we are pointing at a position. So we can just do this, temp inode equals file inode. Yeah, and that increments the count. That's a bit painful, but I think that's reasonable. Assuming we have these things built out up here. Okay, and then I'll have to do similar things for the open file table as well. So I'm just going to copy all this. <laughs> Instead of current open inodes, we do have current open files. So I'm just going to add this there. I don't want to get rid of extra comment things there. Extern vars are from kernel.c. Let's put that here. All right, so search for file in open file table. So it won't be an inode t. It'll be, didn't I add this? Yeah, open file table T, it'll be one of these. Open file table T pointer, temp um, file table entry equals the open file table, not the inode table. So that has an address offset inode, it has an inode reference count and flags. So how do we know we got to this point? I guess we check the inode. It's awkward. I'm like, I'm trying to check the values in something before I like go through and add the values here in my logic. So it's kind of awkward <laughs> working backwards a little bit. So we'll say current file table index. I guess I don't need current on this. I'll probably read a little bit easier, right? So we know it's current by definition. We're using it as such. So we could just call this inode table index and save some I'm reading there a little bit. Two, three, four, five. Okay, current open inodes, that's fine. So a file table index. So we have max open files as well. Yeah. I did make these similar for a reason, so I wouldn't have to think as much. And temp ft entry, ft entry, inode 
ID, so it points to an inode behind it, that would mean that we have the file open in the inode table. That doesn't necessarily mean we have the file open in the file table, right? That might mean we have it open. I'm trying to think, if we use dupe or file dupe or whatever those system calls are later, if we make those, then we'll have the exact same file descriptor, which would be the same entry in the file table, which would have the same backing file in the inode table, I guess. So I really don't care. I'm just going to open a new file table entry regardless, unless they call like dupe or something later, we'll, we'll open a new file table entry. And then we'll set up, you know, the inode as the backing file inside of the inode table, which I did up here. So really, since I have the position in the inode table, I can use temp inode when I add the data later. But at this point, I'm just searching for an open entry because we're not calling dupe or anything. So that would be a little easier actually. So search for open entry and open file table or empty or something, say open spot. Well, we're less than the max and temp entry, I guess whatever the first thing in there, which I think is address. So if that's a zero, if we haven't loaded it to an address, it doesn't exist, right? We could use something else in there though. We could use the offset or the inode. We could say if the inode's blank, right? That's fine too, but yeah, we'll just do that. That's fine. Then we'll have file table index plus plus and temp file table entry plus plus. So we'll search for an open spot. And if we went all the way to the end, this won't happen. We've already added it. I think I'll have to do this though. I know I have current open files plus plus. So I'll see if the file table index equals the max open files. We've reached the end of the list. We need to reallocate and get a, a larger file table. Void malloc pointer, I already had that. <laughs> I guess that's only within this if with the braces though, so I can put it in multiple spots. This will be the size of open file table T times the max open files. We do want a more granular thing that isn't just multiplied by two every time, because if that happens forever, we run out of memory exponentially, you know, very quick. So but that's all right right now. So we'll copy the open file table, the size of open file table T. That is what I called these, right? Open file table, yeah. It looks the same, so it's hard to read it now, but. <laughs> Slightly different. Size of that times the max open files. Then free the original open file table pointer. And we'll have it set to the new malloc pointer, yes. Temp inode. This will be temp ft entry. Equals file table plus max open files. be open. open file table plus max and temp file table entry we'll have to fill out the data here I can do this right <laughs> it's a little bit larger now so let's say the inode would be the file inode. That is true. The inode is a pointer, but it would be the backing inode that we filled out earlier. This, that's pointing to the position in the open file table, in the open inode table. So we can use that as the address here. And I think that'll be okay.
But we will need to load the file to an address though. Um, but I can set up the other data first, I think. So actually, yeah, let me let me not do this right now. Let's just do temp ft entry. It's a pointer, so we'll say the inode, that pointer. will equal this, and we'll have to do... I'm doing things very badly. We got the position, yeah. So this sets the position within the open file table. That's what I'm doing, yeah. Okay, and then we're setting the data at that position. So we'll have an address, we'll have an offset, we'll have other stuff. So the inode will be that. I don't remember the other ones. We have an address and an offset. I don't know what the address is. I guess I'll set that data here. Right now it's gonna be null because we haven't filled it out yet. The offset will also be null. Well, it'll be zero because we haven't filled that out yet. Uh, the reference count would be one. The inode will have the inode data. There's one open reference to this, and the flags will be the flags that was passed in. That is all right. We will have to fill these out, and that's okay. Fill out file table data. So we'll just line these up. So this will be the file table index would equal max open files plus one. And the max open files will now be multiplied by two. So is this data going to be set outside of this function though? I know they're external. They're not static though. We're getting them from elsewhere. I'm not sure that data would be saved if I don't use pointers here, unless I make them static. Isn't that how that works? I don't know. <laughs> these things up here, I think I have to make these static. Because I do want them to change over time and be available elsewhere. That's probably gonna give me issues here. Static declaration follows non-static declaration, yes. But if I do, I think extern static is two different storage classifiers, so that won't work either. Multiple storage classes and declaration specifiers, yeah. Um, okay, I'm just wondering if I have access to these here. Like I want them to be specified here but available for use here, and that's what extern does, but I don't know if they'll have the same values, unless I, I guess I could pass in pointers. It's just annoying. I could have page faults and stuff from uh, passing addresses around. I'm trying to do stuff that doesn't work, <laughs> obviously. So let me see. I might see in my, in my test branch from a while back how I did this, and then I can uh, replicate it here. I'll look at that for a second. All right, so before when I've done this in the past, I actually just had them be regular. These are global, so they would be available outside of this function, even though I mean I can call them extern like I had before. So they're global in here, so they'd be available within this function because this is only going to be links in with the kernel and the translation unit or compilation unit, whatever. Shouldn't need these anymore. So I know if I set the pointer, that should be all right. It's just with these, I'm not sure because they're not static. Although maybe they don't need to be extern. If it's only going to be in the kernel, I don't need to specify them here. Maybe I don't need to specify them there. As long as I say these are static. Oh, this is in the global spot anyway, so these can change. Yeah, no, that should be okay. But 
then it says they're undeclared. First use in this function. So never mind. I do need to use extern. I love learning C for the first time. It's great. <laughs> Current inode table index. I just, I, I'll have to test when I call open if those values change and they were like very small to begin with. So I can test that expanding the table works. I'll just have to do some testing with that later. So right now I'm not sure. Okay. I don't think that should have compiled, but that's fine. I'll, I'll, uh, I'll add a thing to test. Test that these values update from this function and changes are visible back in the kernel. I'll just put that there to test, but I don't need these anymore, so that's good. All right, so we need to fill out the address and the offset. We know we have a new file open. If it already exists, this will only work if we have like dupe or something. I don't need that here. The index of the open file table position slash entry. Open spot, we need not equal to zero. Um, not equal to zero is what we need for that. Yeah, otherwise it would get, go through the whole table. That's not good, yeah. <laughs> if we haven't reached the limit, Keep searching. If we find a zero, it'll stop. And file table index will be the position that has the first zero in that case. So this would be file table index. We would have FD equal file table index. Yeah, we'll do that. Okay. But we do need to load it here to fill those out. Load file from disk to memory to fill out address of file table entry. So I need to call read write sectors probably, but I need to find a new memory thing to do. So let's, well, it depends how big the file is, doesn't it? Ooh. Which would be according to the inode data. We need to know how big it is. Right now we can assume at minimum a file is going to be one block because that's what we allocate uh, to the X tenths within each inode for a file. We have a number of blocks and the length of those blocks for each X tent. I know by minimum, a minimal amount is going to be one block, which is 4K. So we can start by just allocating one page or 4K of memory and loading the file to that new virtual memory position from allocating a page. But really we want to get the actual size, so I might have another thing here. <laughs> a lot of helper functions. Actually, we might have that within the file itself. If we're creating a file, the size will be zero. We might set a default size of 4K, at least for a block being allocated, but maybe we'd set the size to be zero. I'm not sure, because we do have the size right here in the inode itself. So I don't need to make a thing to return the file size. I do need to allocate enough for that size and set the address to that. So let's say if temp ft entry inode, which is temp inode, inode is a pointer, yeah. Size bytes, let's do bytes to blocks. Or if it's greater than, well, yeah. What, what we can do is do, the block size is gonna be the size of a page size anyway, 4096, but I can say if the size is greater than or less than, if it's less than equal a page, which I think we have memory, we have malloc. And this has the memory managers in there. Yeah, it has page size is 4096, so. Go back to where I was, all right. If we're less than or equal to the page size, we can just allocate one page.
All right, else we'll have to do other stuff. Allocate enough pages, blocks for file. Memory virtual. When we allocate a page, we're setting this, we're returning a pointer to the block, which would be a page size. So we'll allocate a block and do that. I don't have allocate pages. I don't think. I only have one page at a time for allocation, don't I? Yeah. That should be okay, though. But I need something to do that. What was I doing in the kernel? <laughs> when I was allocating stuff, I go to the bottom, go up to where I'm loading files and things. I do this, okay. I get the page size, the amount of pages that I need, and then I'm mapping them. That's probably what I'll need to do, but it won't be at the entry point. It'll be like this. So we'll add the page size. I won't be doing this anymore in the kernel. That'll be later. Um, so your size in pages will be Size and bytes, and we'll be doing bytes, blocks of that. So blocks and pages are equal, so this is kind of confusing, but we'll get the number of pages that we need to allocate for the file according to its size. Then we'll allocate those pages. We'll probably do this. We'd have to unmap them later. Or we could, I mean, we could use malloc as well and just have them live on the heap. Do we want the files to live on the heap or be allocated within the memory manager? Because if we, if we use malloc, it will go through the memory manager to allocate more stuff as needed, but it would all be on the heap. Would that matter? I don't even have processes set up. I'm not sure that matters that much. I should have enough stack space. This would be for user programs later, but it could tie into kernel or regular malloc, which is at four meg entry point, or three meg entry point, or this could be separate. I'm trying to think. I have multiple memory allocation schemes. So I could do this manually and mark them as used, right, in the physical memory map. I guess that would make more sense. That would probably be better than just using malloc for this. It's probably a separate use case. So yeah, we'll do we'll do um this, I guess. Size and pages. We'll allocate the page to that address. We'll map the page. Couldn't map maybe out of memory. That would be bad. So in this case, we'll set FD equal negative one. And break. Well, or return. Probably just return. We can't map it. Don't have the entry point here. Oh, I don't know what I would want to map it to. Maybe I do have to use malloc. I'm not sure what address it should be mapped to. That's not great. Oh, that's annoying. Okay, well, this is going to be a bad implementation. <laughs> My file tables are already malloc. Do I want the files themselves to be malloc as well? Which the file tables point to? Probably not great. Because that allocates to a physical address. I need to allocate that to a virtual address. What virtual address address should I choose? I might need a function to get the next free virtual address as well. I don't know. It could be anything, really. I know malloc for these tables is offset from the kernel malloc entry or start, which is at 3 meg. 
Malox for loaded program is going to be at 4 meg, so I don't want to touch either of those really. But these could be at like anywhere in memory. I mean, I can make it like a gig plus or something. I, I might need something that has like the next valid point to allocate at. As I complicate everything ever further, <laughs> which is not great. Let's say next available virtual address. Um, I don't know. File virtual address. Right. We'll start it out at like one gig or something. Well, the kernel's loaded at three gigs. So we could make it beyond that. And the virtual address doesn't matter. The physical one does, but that's fine. The virtual could be anything. It could be like five terabytes if we had enough address space. Uh, but it only goes up to four gigs right now because I'm in 32-bit. So not three or four meg. I mean, I could do one gig. Yeah, one, one gig is probably would be all right. What is that? Is that just, is that like hex one million? I know one meg. This is four gigs. So I want this like divided by four. <laughs> Effectively. Yeah, so three, three, so 40 million in hex. That should be about one gig, I think. Yeah, okay, yeah. So if I multiply by four, I'll get, yeah, four gig. We'll do minus one, that's four gig, right? So this value, we divide that by four, we get, yeah. So I'll do that. We'll do 0x4, 40, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. So default to one gig. We need a better solution, of course, later on. I think that's one gigabyte. We'll have to update that as well. But that's fine. So that needs to be x turn as well. Next available file virtual address. Just so I have the name available and we'll get rid of that. So that virtual address will be mapped to physical address that we get from allocating the next page. If we can't do it, we'll error. Uh, FD should be negative one, but I'll set that here explicitly. Actually, let me do this here. Because that'll be this. Then yeah, I can set FD to negative one and I can break from this loop and that'll still be there, okay. We'll just override it. So I'll also increase next available virtual address. File virtual address by the page size, because that'll be the next one. And when we free a file, or well, remove, <laughs> close a file later, I guess we can decrement or something for that later. I, I don't know. I'll need something to wrap around or deal with this value later on. This is not really great, but I did not think this through. <laughs> I don't want everything living on the malloc space, so I want to separate them out a little bit. But I could always just malloc the file and then point to that address. It's just, yeah, I don't know. I'll try this. This might be more complicated than it needs to be. But I'll have to free the pages later for these. That should be okay. I don't know. <laughs> anyway, we, sh we should allocate that and get that going. So the initial page that we get would be where the file starts. I'm assuming these, these are going to be contiguous addresses as well. But the initial page that we get is where the file is going to start in memory. So I do want to grab that. So let's do that first. Uh, 
Then we'll do this again here. But I'm grabbing this first because I need to put that within the file table entry. Because so, that is the address where the file lives at now in, well, in virtual memory, actually. So I could set it to next available address before this happens. Actually, that would be better. Yeah, that would make more sense. So we have a virtual memory manager. Yeah, that would make more sense. If we don't return, well, yeah. If we don't return that, we'll know we worked, so. Temp. All right, we'll set that. And the offset will still be zero, that is okay. Unless we had O truncate, or not O truncate, um, append. Which I don't know if I'm doing that. Let's call numbers. We have O append, so that would always write at the end of the file position. Which means the offset would be changed. The offset's going to be zero by default. And zero would point to the start of the file, which starts at here in virtual memory. So let's say we loaded all of that. So if flags and O append, file will be, will it be read at the end of that? Or is this just for writing? I don't know. Right now I think it's just for writing. <laughs> at end of file every time. So that would mean the offset needs to point to the end of the file, which would be the file size in bytes effectively. Yeah, one based or zero based, that would point to the end every time. Yeah, so that should be okay. So that would be the inode file size in bytes. That would be the position at the end of the file. So we would start writing from there next time they call like write, for example. That's where the offset is. And then we'll have to handle in read and write or other syscalls, seek or something. We'll have to handle if we go beyond the file size, we'll have to allocate more pages and do this stuff. So this code isn't great. I'm not happy this is here. I'm not sure if it would be better to use malloc. You know, and keep malloc-ing and make a realloc and put stuff with that. I don't really know. I'm losing track of the memory map in my head right now, so. <laughs> There's probably other stuff we have to do with this, but assuming things are laid out, I think that's all I want to do for open. It's very painful and it's confusing. It's not that long. I just have, you know, large font and stuff. I do need to make these. Right, get the parent inode and create a file. I think I'll try to do these on the next part. I know this isn't the most exciting things because I still have a bunch of testing to do and I don't know what I'm doing. So, you know, that's fun. I'll have to test, you know, the right file descriptor returned is at least three and, and other things like that. So if those values get updated, we probably want to make these. These will be helper functions within the file system implementation file. And create's going to have a lot of stuff involved. <laughs> for creating a new thing. But that's all right. I'll try to go through some of these to-dos and make some of these helper functions on the next one. And I uh, don't know past that. I guess make close. Eventually we'll make a close syscall. Fill that out. And then maybe a seek. And then try reading and writing to buffers and test these things and make, you know, open and change directories and, and testing things. All right. So I'll continue this stuff on the next one. Thanks for watching. If you did, I know it's probably boring and been bad and I don't know what I'm doing because I mostly don't. I'm trying to figure it out. But thank you regardless. Hope it provides some value to somebody, at least trying to think through a problem at the very least. And that might be the very most as well that I'm doing right now, but that's okay. So see you on the next one. And uh, yeah, cheers.